Today, I'm happy to announce that Mandala Maker version 2 is now available on my Gumroad for only $1. The first version is still available and will forever be free. Links to both versions down below. Okay, so let me show you around Mandala Maker version 2. Right now, I am using Blender 3.3.1. So what you'll get is a .blend file, which by default opens to what you can see right now. So first off, you'll see that at the very top, it's just one tab. And this is the Mandala Maker. This is just to declutter. When making mandalas or using Blender in general, I don't use the tabs that are usually there. Next, let's look at what's right in the center of our workspace. This would be our main viewport, and this is where we will be doing most of our work. As you can see, we are in the orthographic front view, and in my experience, this is the best view to work with while making mandalas. I'm imagining this project file as a sort of starting point for every mandala that you make. Before, I would do everything from scratch, but I realized that I'm doing the same things over and over again. So that's why I made this mandala maker, and I hope that uh, for your mandala projects, this will be very helpful. So right away, we have three objects uh, selected, all right? Not mirrored, which means there is no symmetry for this object, right? Mirrored, which is instanced with a symmetrical object, and 3D, this is just to show you that uh, you can have 3D objects here too. You have the option to delete them immediately, and this opens up the project for the objects that you will use for your mandala. Let's move on over to the left. You will see your second viewport. And this is what I would use just as a render preview. When opening the Mandala Maker, one of the first things that I would advise you would do is to change this into render view. So as you can see right now, uh, the background is actually set to black. Something else that you may have noticed is that in the main viewport over here, our main uh, workspace, you can see our source objects are colored red, but you cannot see them red in the render preview. When making mandalas, it's easy to lose track of where your objects are amidst the intricate patterns that you're creating. I have assigned the color red to these main objects to show this is just one way for you to keep track of your source objects. This is achieved by adjusting the clip start in the camera properties. So if I actually rotate this, you can see that the main mandala object is uh, a bit far from our source objects. And if I clip the camera just to uh, right in between these two, uh, it will not show in our render preview. So over on the right side, you'll see the outliner where uh, you'll find the collections that make up our Mandala Maker project file. This will make sense once we look at the GeoNodes modifier tab, as well as the node tree. One thing to take note here is that the camera and the GeoNodes object cannot be selected. This is just to make sure that you don't accidentally move these objects while working with your Mandala. So if I click around right now, uh, if, I, if I click on the camera right here, you won't be able to select it, as well as the... Um, the actual mandala object itself, all right? Oh, one of the things that I forgot to mention is that there is one section here in the outliner that says no mandala. And uh, this is just to indicate that you can have um, objects in your mandala project that, are, that won't be instanced into that circular array. Okay, so right now we have Suzanne. And over here in the rendered view, you can see that there are two lights that are affecting, that are affecting her, all right? Moving on. Right below your render preview is the modifier tab. This is the uh, biggest update to the Mandala Maker. Here you can find some of the basic but important functions in making your Mandala. One of the things that you'll have to decide early on is the number of repetitions that you'd like to make. So before it was like this weird um, object thing that you go up and down over on the right side of the, the first version, but now I was able to integrate it into the modifier. So here in the modifier tab, you can increase the number to like seven or eight, and it'll it'll update immediately. Uh, I'd like to keep this number relatively low, but you can always go as high as you can, go crazy, and you can see how intricate the patterns uh, you can make. The next couple of properties determine the source of your patterns, which is controlled by our geometry nodes. And so here I labeled them as solo and mirror. 
So in solo, these are the not mirrored uh, objects, right? So you can have them uh, just like a, as one element that will not be symmetrical. And you have mirror, which is trans, uh, which is here in the collection Mandala mirrored. If I select that, you can see that this is the mirrored object here. The fourth and last property, we have canvas size. In the first version, I assigned an object to be the driver of the canvas size, but with geometry nodes, I'm able to have it in a more convenient space here in the mod modifiers panel. It's pretty straightforward. Just adjust this number to change the size of your canvas. All right, so as you can see, the camera is actually getting bigger here in our main view, and you can see the canvas size here in the uh, render viewport changing as well. So if you have like a big project, you can uh, make it as big as you can, all right? But the default right now is at 20. And finally, over here at the bottom, you can see that we have our geometry nodes. I kept this here in case you want to make changes in the node tree. Like for example, right now, everything that will be instanced by this geo node setup will be assigned the material called emission basic. It's found right here at the end of the node tree. You can disable this by clicking on it and pressing M for mute. Now you can see what happened. The mandala will now be colored according to whatever color you've assigned to your objects. Right now, we have source red. And if we make a new material for mirrored, let's say, uh, let's choose mirrored object right here. And let's say we'll choose the color orange. We'll make a new material. This is now source red.001. And we'll choose the color orange. You can see that mirrored is the only orange color while everything is red, apart from Suzanne here, who belongs to the collection No Mandala. No Mandala is not included in the GeoNode tree. The emission basic is useful for seeing the silhouette of your mandala, usually during the early stage of your design. Okay, before we actually try making a mandala, I have one more thing to point out. Over here on the outline section, we can see that one of the collections is called layer.000. As it implies, it is possible to have multiple layers of your mandala. This is important, especially if you have different number of repetitions in just one mandala. However, it's a little complicated to do, so I'll explain in another video. Please subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Okay, let's make a mandala. I'll start off by deleting all of these three things. Uh, I will also disable no mandala. So I am left with a blank space. Um, what I usually want to do is start off with just one path curve. And right now it is automatically assigned to the collection mandala mirrored. If in case it's not there, you can always just uh, make sure that the curve is selected, press M, and then you can assign it to the layer.000 and you go to mandala mirrored and right after uh, creating that path node i go to the curves properties tab i'll go down here to uh, where is it oh sorry it's here in bevel okay you go to bevel and then you change the depth to like 0.25 would be enough and if i move this around you can see that it is already um, instanced and it's already uh, making uh, a pattern after this i'd like to what i'd like to do is select the endpoints of this curve i hit alt s and i hit zero so that i'll have this wonderful um, fall off so this is where i can start making my pattern now um, the mandala maker uh, starts off with a number of six but right now let's say we'll do nine okay so this can really, it's really important for you to select how many repetitions you'll have because it'll determine uh, the way you're going to move your curves. Okay, so let's start off with something like this maybe. Let's move this around, see what interesting shapes that we'll get. So right now I really like this, um, this ending uh, shape over here where the curve just slightly becomes... Um, open like that okay so over here in the render preview i'm making it full screen by hovering my mouse over it 
and pressing Control Spacebar. As you can see in our pattern, it's, uh, it's really looking nice uh, with just this one curve repeating nine times with a symmetrical instance. Okay, uh, what else can I do? I think I'll assign source red to this just so that I can see it. Okay, um, I think I like this shape. Now what I can do is duplicate and have a second layer and look at that. I already have uh, actually that first move that I did was actually pretty good because I'm filling up this negative space here. But what I can also do is zoom in here and make sure that these two uh, this touches with this uh, with its um, reflection. What I also want to do right now is make this a little thinner. So what I can do is select this curve, hit tab to edit mode, press A to select all of the points. Again, hit Alt S, and then just drag my mouse closer to the middle, and I'll have a thin line. Okay. That'll give me some contrast uh, with my pattern. So with this shape, I have a bit of an empty space right here. So let's try filling it up with uh, an object that will be assigned to not mirrored. So what I can do now is add a, let's make, let's select a UV sphere. By default, it's assigned to the mirrored collection, right? So if I, you can either press M and go to um, mandala not mirrored or you can just go to the outliner here and just drag it to that uh, collection now we have um, a sphere that is not symmet uh, that is not mirrored or doesn't have a symmetrical instance okay let's make this a little smaller so if you've been working with mandalas uh, I'm not sure if you could relate but um, what I really like are curves and or lines and circles this circle right here, gives me a good um, like focal point in the empty space. Okay, uh, I think that's big enough. I'm gonna go right click and shade smooth. I'm also going to assign source red to this so that I can just keep track. Uh, one of the things that you could also do is go to the um, modifier tab over here on the left side and just disable it. And you can see that our source object is actually just a cube. I have three objects one curve, second curve, and then uh, a circle. And it's positioned in that way. And I already have an interesting shape. Now let's see what will happen if we change the repetitions. Ooh, that actually looks pretty good. Seven looks not bad. But um, the only problem here, again, you have to decide the number of repetitions that you have early on. Because if I change to eight, it actually looks good. But this circle is no longer centered in the uh, negative space. So I'm gonna switch actually to eight. I think it looks a little better. Okay, let's try to zoom in and make sure that it's centered. So with this, I can actually just duplicate and add more spheres to my mandala. And uh, one of the tips that I could give right now is if you want this really centered, like in line with the Z axis line there, you can go to the object properties, go to location X, and then just type in zero. Right now you can see it's already centered. And uh, maybe one last one last element before before I end uh, this video. Oh, look at that. So I duplicated. I'm gonna grab this and I duplicate it. I just drag it to the middle. And look at, look at how wonderful these patterns instantly become, right? So I'm just, uh, and just with a few adjustments, you know, I could make it really clean, or maybe I want it to, actually that one, the first one was good. Um, hmm. I like that. Just making sure that it's intersecting. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, let's clean this one up. This, I don't want this to have that outward curve anymore there all right that's looking quite good so i can see here in our render preview that there's like an overshot here so what i can do is select that curve and just move it a little bit so that it won't it's, a, it's a just cleaner that way all right so i think i'm 
I'm happy with this. Uh, but the, the next thing that I could do as a last step is actually assign colors. I'm going to go open up the bottom panel here to open up the Mandala Maker. Select Set Material and hit M. So right now I have a red mandala, but I can change that. Let's say um, source red. Let's let's have a base of. Um, I'm feeling I'm feeling orange right now. Okay, orange is there, and oh, now it's harder to keep track of my objects because it's orange. <laughs> let's not do orange. Because the outline for Blender, when you select it, it's orange. Let's go a uh, little bit of a pale blue. All right. Uh, now, if I... That's interesting. Okay. So if you have set material on, and you hit tab to edit your your object, the, the points... Are going to be just on that object but if you do set material and then you do edit mode everything is going to show up so it's going to be confusing right that's why at the beginning it's good to have set material on just so that you know where your source um, objects are so um, for this uh, i'm not going to edit it anymore i'm just going to assign a new material uh, let's make this and one of the other things that I like to do for projects you involving mandalas is I'm going to turn on bloom okay and I'm going to show you why in just a sec I'm going to choose this small circle over here I'm going to change the color I'm going to add another one um, I'm going to change the color to back into this yellow here but this time, I'm going to increase the strength, and it's going to glow. I really like the effect of uh, glowing things in my mandalas when I use the mandala maker. And yeah, it's just really nice to look at. Perhaps this one also. Let's change... I'm, what I'm going to do is just duplicate the material over here. And then I'm just going to increase, and we have this. <laughs> I have a mandala and that's it for the video uh, the mandala that you, ac you can actually see right now is one of my test mandalas before recording this video uh, I hope you enjoyed watching if you haven't already please like the video and subscribe to my channel if you want to hear updates about the mandala maker version 2 thanks for watching bye